Right, next up I'm going to remove the outer gearbox cover so that we can get to the nut on the end of the gearbox main shaft and remove that by once again using the vise and the rear chain to lock the gearbox pocket so that we can undo that nut. The only problem I've got with this is that I'm fairly sure that there is still oil in the gearbox. When I got the engine the sump plate was off so I know that there was no oil actually in the engine but uh, there is definitely oil in the gearbox and the problem is because I've got it on this engine stand that completely covers the uh, let's have a look the drain plug which is this one which is right over the top of the engine stand so what I'll do is I'll remove uh, uh, this nut which is the plunger nut uh, we'll cover that later on but basically there's a big long plunger in there that goes up into the gearbox and so we'll remove that and that will basically drain most of the oil uh, nearly as much uh, as the uh, as removing the actual drain plug um, it's still going to be awkward because the stand's in the way but um, uh, but that's what we'll do okay well it's proving difficult to uh, remove that nut the uh, um, plunger nut because even that's fouling on the uh, engine stand so all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to remove the uh, outer casing with the oil in and as that casing uh, releases all the oil will come out and hopefully uh, go into the waiting tray right I've removed all the screws from the outer cover and there's two nuts that go on these two studs but that off it doesn't so oh yeah it's coming yep and there goes the oil right all i need to do i'm going to put a screwdriver in because obviously the kickstart's missing and just to stop this unwinding and catching me as i take the uh, Casing off. There we go. There we go. And what I do is then I'm slowly releasing the tension of the kickstart spring. There we go. That's pretty monkey oil that for a gearbox. I mean, you normally get black oil in um, an engine, but uh, wow, there's there's a bit of sludge. If you can see, you know, look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but that's um, that is thick black sludge. So for a gearbox, that's uh, desperate need for an oil change. Crikey! Look, <laughs> oh blimey! Look at this. I think someone's greased it. I know. That's probably what it is. It someone's greased it, so the grease has gone down and mixed up with all the oil. Okay. Let that drain for a bit obviously and um, this is the nut that I need to undo this nut on the end of the gearbox main shaft and so what I'll be doing is I'll be relocking the gearbox pocket like we did before with the chain and the vice and then I can undo that nut and then all, all those nuts that we need to lock uh, have been undone Yuxville that's really thick really gooey Blimey. Not seen it like that before. Maybe there's water in there, but I think more could be a mixture of water. But I think it's also that there's grease in there. Right. So I've locked the chain again around the gearbox sprocket, but this time the chain's the other way around because I'm turning the other way. And so I'm trying to remove the gearbox main shaft nut. But of course, it's just turning at the moment because the bike's in neutral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can snick it up into first there. So this is a quadrant. This is what the actual the gear lever actually connects to. There. 
So we're in first now. That means the gearbox is all locked, which in turn is locked on to the gearbox sprocket. By moving that quadrant up one, puts it into first. And then I've got the old magic uh, I've got my cordless impact driver. Put it on maximum torque. Ooh, and I'm hoping we get the same result as last time. There we go. Oh yeah, straight off. No problem at all. So, lock and washer, nut. Then we get the kickstart uh, pull, and the ratchet. and the spacer at the back oh, this is all really really messy this gearbox and that means that we can now remove the inner uh, gearbox cover because with that nut in place you obviously it can't slide over the gearbox main shaft and that's why you've got to remove that nut first and that's why we need to lock the gearbox and so on so that's great and that means I shall probably carry on now and dismantle the rest of the gearbox. Uh, I don't think I explained that well before, but this quadrant here, butterfly quadrant as it's called, because when you take it apart, it looks a bit like a pair of butterfly wings. This is the quadrant that's used for actually changing the gears. And uh, what I had to do uh, when I removed this... Uh, kickstart uh, ratchet nut, pinion nut, was I moved the quadrant round. So there, that's now in neutral. And what I did was I moved it up one. And that's why I was having a bit of trouble because I didn't want to move up one. <clears throat> oh, the best thing, there we go. And that's into first. All right, and, and I did that so the sprocket would lock the gearbox main shaft so I could take that nut off. Okay, I'll put it back on neutral. Now it doesn't really matter. But that's what I was doing. I don't think I was very clear about that before. Okay, um, we're getting ready to remove the uh, cover. So that's held on. The inner cover is held on by four screws. You've got an Allen key here. You've got a large Allen uh, bolt there. And then you've got two bolts underneath, which of course... I've set the camera up perfectly so you can't see. So let's see if I can do this at all on this tripod. Oh, I might have to start the whole thing again. Never mind. Oh, yeah, you can just see them. That'll do me. <laughs> okay, so there is, yeah, that is another Allen key down there. And then at the top of the picture there is, I'll just move this a bit. That's the trouble having things on a stand. That's a, that a half inch bolt. So you've got four bolts that hold the gearbox on. Two standard Allen keys. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Two standard Allen keys. Or Allen bolts. One there and one underneath. One large Allen bolt there and a half inch bolt hidden under there. Easy to miss. So I'm going to remove those uh, and then we'll be ready to take the uh, uh, inner, inner casing off. Right, we're getting ready now to remove the inner gearbox casing. I've removed the four bolts that hold the casing on, and so I'm nearly ready to, to pull the casing off. Before I do that, I'm going to check the end float on the lay shaft. This is the lay shaft just here. And that, I'd say, is about between... 10, 10, 15 thou, and that feels pretty good to me. I just wanted to check that before I took things apart in case that end float, end float was excessive, and it's certainly not it's just right, so I know that we don't need to change the uh, thrust washers and that inside. I'll come to that later on when we rebuild the gearbox, but it's good to check it before you take the gearbox apart. Right, I'm going to take the 
casing off, or at least try. Now the advantage is I've got a big flange here, so I'll just give it a bit of a tap. Off she goes. And I'm hoping that the oil goes into my... Yeah, just... I was hoping it goes into my little catch rather than onto the table, which it is doing. Okay, get the alternator lead out of the way. And the... Oops, a daisy, get back on there. All right, and the inner casing in all its glory just slides off with all that black gunge masquerading as oil. Okay, that's good. And you can probably get to begin to see why that's called a butterfly quadrant now. That's one side and that's the other. It looks a bit like a pair of butterfly wings. Okay, I'll put the, uh, I'll put the inner casing I'll leave it there to drain of that gunge oil as best I can. Mm, I've just seen that there's a slight break on the casing there. Ooh, I'll have to examine that later on. I think we'll get away with that, but not good to have a break on a casing next to a bearing. Mm, not sure. Anyway, to be inspected later on. Right, so daisy. Put that over there. Get it out of the way a bit. And then we've got the gearbox itself and we're going to start taking the actual gears out. Okay, so now we're going to disassemble the gearbox. So the first thing I'm going to do, well, the first thing I'll do is just explain what we've got. We've got the gearbox main shaft here, which has got one set of gears on. And underneath it, we've got the lay shaft, which has got another set of gears on. Uh, then we've got the gear selector shaft, which has the selectors on. And then we have the, uh, I don't always call it cam wheel. Yeah, cam wheel. This is a cam wheel which actually moves around and it's got slots in it. And those slots move the gear selectors backwards and forwards. And when, as they move forwards, they move the gears backwards and forwards on the two shafts, engaging different gears, which then uh, decides which gear you're in. Okay, so first thing we do is to remove the gear, uh, the fork selector shaft. Then I'm going to move, remove the dog off the uh, lay shaft. Then using a pair of external uh, circuit removers. Sorry, everything is just really pretty filthy on this on this gearbox. There's a circlip and a groove behind that dog. I'm just removing that circlip. Okay. And then everything comes off kind of a bit of a time. Now what I do is when I pull bits off, I see they come off easy. Uh, what I do is I put all the left, I put all the gears in order because no matter how many times I do it, I always worry I'm going to forget the order the gears go back in. It's a silly thing, but, but I do it. For a start, it's all in the manual. And B, you'll find that somewhere on these gears, you'll have a part number. So if you're not sure which gear it is, you can look up the part number. Uh, and they say, oh, that's the first gear, or that's the second gear. But, so I, I'll take it off, and then I put it down. I put it down facing upwards, so I know that's facing outwards. And I just have a cursory check of the gears. As I, as I take them off. And that's the first uh, actual selector. Which, um, so there's three selectors, that's the first one. Then I'll take the next gear off the lay shaft, which I think is need the second gear. Again, there's a part number, I don't know if you can see there, but you see there's a part number on the gear. So uh, you can always uh, check which gear it is. Uh, then first and second gear off the main shaft. Put that down over there. And I think, is it third gear, is it? I think off the main shaft. Get rid of another door, another selector fork. 
of the main shaft, of the lay shaft, and another selector fork, the second selector fork. Just checking briefly for where. Uh, so you can see that. Oh, where's the camera going? In there. Yeah, they look, uh, they look in pretty good condition, actually. Those. Very good. Especially considering what the state of the oil. Oh, then the last uh, selector fork. And then there's the gearbox main shaft has come off, complete with fourth gear. And then hopefully, yeah, there we go. And this is the lay shaft with fourth and fifth gear. Uh, they're always attached together, fourth and fifth gear on the lay shaft. And there's a thrust washer, thrust washer at the back. Yeah, the gearbox uh, done not too bad. Right then, I should be able to rem remove the uh, cam. Am I saying that right? The cam wheel. Oh, I can never remember what it's called. Anyway, if I turn that to the right position, then it will come off parts. There's still. I don't know if you can see here, but at the back of the gearbox, that's still that's the fifth fifth gear, and that comes off uh, separately. So, but I think if I turn this the right way, there we go. If you get, if you turn this uh, camera so this flat side faces the gear, then it comes off. But as you can see, absolutely thick with this black oil. But considering that, uh, all the parts, you know, there's no obvious problems with them. Right, I've removed the uh, gearbox sprocket uh, from the other side of the high gear. And I, because I just loosely put that back on so that we could remove the kickstart ratchet pinion nut. I'm learning. And then hopefully the high gear will just push out. There we go. And it's pushing out. And there's the big, big roll of main bearing for the, for the gearbox main shaft in the back. And here's the uh, fifth gear or sleeve gear as it's called with its two needle roller bearings. And its oil seal. I must say, this is the the most the dirtiest oil I've ever seen in a gearbox. Generally, you'll find that the engine oil can be very black and dirty where it's burned, but gearbox oil tends to stay quite uh, sort of fresh. But this is really thick and black. I think it's maybe because it's been mixed with grease. I don't know. But anyway, it's, we started to clear it up a bit. Anyway, the gearbox is now stripped. And just to mention that if you want any more detailed information about what's on the videos, then there is the workshop manual that goes uh, alongside the videos and that covers restoring the whole bike, not just the engine. Uh, and that's available from all uh, good booksellers around the world. You can just put my name, uh, Chris Rook, into the search bar, like Amazon search bar or wherever, and it, uh, and it should come up.